In today's macro photography tutorial, we're taking a look at creating some colourful uh, geometric abstract art using tiny little interlocking hexagons. I'll show you exactly what I mean in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome to another macro photography tutorial. Uh, recently, I've been in the mood for creating a little bit more colorful uh, abstract art using my camera. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. I've got in mind some really interesting shots uh, using this little hexagonal toy. There's lots of little uh, interweaving um, hexagons in this little thing. Uh, it's got a little centerpiece with some magnets in it, and there's a little piece on the back as well. This is a little 3D print that I found online. I saw it in a little video, and I asked Sam to uh, 3D print this for me, so he's run it off on uh, the 3D printer. It's turned out really nicely, and I'll show you in a little bit more detail uh, what this thing actually comprises of, and then we can take a look at how to photograph it. This thing is actually really simple. All that it comprises of is this little black piece here which acts as a holder, it's just solid plastic. And then this uh, little handle has a couple of magnets in it. On the other side, we have all of these white hexagons. Now these all move around freely and this middle piece, if I can get it out, has some corresponding magnets on it, which means we can control this, we can move this middle piece around using the little black handle. And now I'm just going to pop that back in there because I'm not sure that we're going to be using uh, this little handle all that much because it's not uh, it's not particularly smooth to, uh, to move it around, but you can see how you can create these really interesting patterns uh, by moving all of the uh, the white hexagons around simply by manipulating that middle piece. Without the magnet, you can do the same thing just by moving it around with your finger. So if you're not trying to get any videography, it's probably easier just to manipulate all of these with your hands and then take your shots afterwards. All of this works outside of the little black holder as well. So if we want to get some shots uh, of light passing through them, we can just put them down onto my glass coffee table here and then we can do all sorts of interesting things by shining colour through them, silhouetting them against brighter backgrounds and also potentially stacking them up. You can see that we can create some really interesting shapes and arrangements of these hexagons because they have a little bit of movement. We're going to take advantage of this tiny little bit of movement and see what we can actually create in terms of patterns and then add some colour and some lighting to play around uh, with our photography. I think we can get some really cool uh, abstract shots, lots of geometric shapes, lines and spirals uh, using our little 3D printed toy. I want to be adding a lot of colour to these images as well though. If you think back to a few months ago, uh, I showed you how to create really interesting, uh, colourful abstract shots using paper. We're going to be using a similar technique today, and I'm still going to use a sheet of paper. I'm just going to grab this little A4 printer paper uh, here, and I'm going to be placing that down on my coffee table uh, to provide a shooting surface and a little bit of diffusion for my coloured light. And my first shot is going to be similar to those paper shots where I light the, uh, the paper and my toy from underneath using some coloured lights and silhouette those hexagons against the background. If you didn't see the last video where we used this setup, let me run you through it really quickly. Uh, we've got our tripod here and our camera uh, pointing directly downwards so that the front of my lens is parallel with the surface. On my surface, I have my sheet of paper, and then I have my subject, which is just the little white parts, just the hexagons from our toy. I'm not going to be using the black parts in this, simply because I want light to shine through all of the little gaps, all of the little lines between the hexagons. That light is going to be coming from the Adapter Look Studio. So I have my control pod here, sat on a little miniature tripod, and I'm going to be plugging in some colored lighting arms. So I've got an amber lighting arm here, and I've got a blue lighting arm as well. Now I'm going to be changing these around, changing the colors, and changing the placement of them. 
All of these are going underneath my table, underneath the glass of my coffee table, and underneath that white piece of paper. As I place these under here, we can shine them up onto the underside of my hexagon toy. Then the light is going to shine through the paper, be a little bit diffused as it comes through, and create a nice mix of colours. Where the uh, hexagons are sat, it's going to be in shadow because there won't be any light on the top of my toy. It'll all be coming from the underneath, so it'll be silhouetted. As you can see there, creating uh, light underneath our hexagons is really satisfying. It's really easy to do as well. That paper simply acts as a layer of diffusion to blend the light together, soften it up a little bit before it hits our hexagons. Um, but by all means, try different diffusion materials, try different methods of lighting your uh, hexagons from underneath. In fact, even placing them onto a phone screen or an iPad screen might create some really interesting effects because then you can animate that light underneath uh, your hexagons and silhouette it against uh, potentially anything. So I'm going to try a couple of different things with my hexagons now. I want to try lighting them uh, from above uh, and I want to get a little bit more of a 3D element into, uh, into our shots. I think I can stack these hexagons up on top of each other to create almost a hexagonal pyramid that spirals around, gets taller, and then we'll have a lot more height to play around with, uh, including using our depth of field to our advantage. So as you can see, what I've got now is sort of a pyramid of all of those hexagons stacked up quite delicately on top of one another. It's, uh, it's not perfect, they aren't completely perfectly aligned, but I think they make for a really interesting shot, especially from above. Uh, now our depth of field can't focus down the entire depth of this stack of hexagons. So it's only focused on the very top, and as the, uh, as the pyramid widens and spreads out and gets further away from the lens, our depth of field, our focus, drops off. So it creates this nice soft focus on the bottom few. Now, if you keep your paper in there, you can take advantage of this using that same technique that we just looked at. Add some color underneath and that color will blend really nicely together. It will be slightly more out of focus. It will, uh, it will create nice blends with the out of focus areas of your hexagons on the bottom layers and it's a really nice effect. I want to try and take advantage of my depth of field even more. I'm going to add some light in from the sides. I'm going to try and light all of the inside and outside edges of each of these pieces of hexagon. I think it's going to make for a really interesting effect if we can get light inside this little cone and on the outside as well. I'm really liking how my little tower of hexagons is looking. From the top we can get a lot of depth of uh, field, uh, it really falls off there at the bottom, and we do have the option of photo stacking if you want to get a little bit more of your uh, pyramid in focus. If you want maybe the top two or three levels, uh, then you can focus stack. Uh, I've got my macro rail on here, so I'm just inching forward, taking a couple of shots, and then I'm going to stack them together uh, to create uh, a little bit of a wider depth of field. That's completely optional. This is a subject that I think really lends itself to having a shallow depth of field and even going freehand, exploring around all of these different shapes, all of the different interacting lines and all of the interacting light that's bouncing off uh, the inside edges of these hexagons and the outside edges. It's coming from below, it can come from the sides and especially with a glass surface like the one that I've got, you have a lot of options of where to bring that light light in. Using coloured light you can bring in uh, contrasting colours from two different angles, from the top, from the bottom, from the sides. Uh, there really is uh, endless options as to what to do with a subject like this. 
Considering this is just a simple 3D printed a novelty, a little toy, uh, it can make for some really cool shots. I've uh, got a lot of different colours, a lot of different angles on, on this thing, um, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting to, uh, you know, uh, get some cool shots of the little spirals of it sat in its little case here, uh, but I think taking it out uh, of this black uh, surround has actually given us a lot more a range of options on what to do with this, and it also gives us that opportunity to light it from behind and silhouette the shapes against some coloured light. Uh, I'll put the link to uh, the files for this little 3D printed toy, I'll put those down in the description. If you have a 3D printer yourself, it's really easy to print, uh, it's all ready to go and you can just run it off really quickly and start experimenting. If you do plan on giving this little 3D printed toy a go, let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to find out how many people do actually have 3D printers, whether you'd like to see some more uh, 3D printed shapes, toys, curiosities uh, that are specifically geared towards macro photography. I think there's going to be quite a few interesting little pieces out there like this that we could easily print and show you guys in tutorials just like this one. If you do give it a go, I'd love to see your results as well. So uh, the best place to show off your work is actually our Facebook community group. I'll put a link that to that down in the description and you guys can head over there to share your work and uh, see the work of other photographers in the Adaptalux community. Although we did print this thing for photography purposes, I think it's actually going to become a little bit of a uh, fidget toy around my house. Uh, it's quite satisfying just to play around with it, uh, watch all of those shapes appear and disappear. Uh, it's quite mesmerizing actually. I am going to have to put it down for now though guys, because I'm out of time. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to leave me a like, uh, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. But for now though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.